The 27 leaders of Europe whether Ukraine will be in NATO, I asked directly. Everyone is afraid, does not answer. And we are not afraid. We are not afraid of anything. And that was Ukrainian, Ukraine's president's message to the NATO in wake of Russians, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In that same message, he said he believes he's being targeted along with his family. He also reported that 137 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed since the invasion began early on Thursday. This attack sent a shockwave of explosions through the country. Civilians ran for cover underground, turning subways into bomb shelters. It's shocking to see a lot of these things in images. Others got stuck in traffic trying to evacuate the capital city of Kiev. Now, officials in the country say that they've lost control of the decommissioned Chernobyl nuclear plant power plant and the scene of the world's worst nuclear disaster. President Biden responded with more crushing economic sanctions against Russia. He says they're designed to maximize long-term impact on Russia and minimize the impact in the U.S. and its allies. This aggression cannot go unanswered. If it did, the consequences for America would be much worse. America stands up to bullies. We stand up for freedom. This is who we are. An IU student tells News 8 that her family is living in fear and uncertainty as the Russian invasion of Ukraine continues. News 8's Adam Pinsker is telling us that that student is urging everyone who supports Ukraine to make their voices heard. Yeah, Alexis, Natalia Shapovia Saeed is a Ph.D. student at IU Bloomington. She's lived in the United States since 2017 and last visited the Ukraine back in August. Now she worries about her relatives there. A country on edge as Ukrainian residents awoke to Russian mortar fire. I do feel very helpless because I don't know how I can help my family. Uh, and it causes a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety. Natalia Shablova, Saeed's brother and mother, live about 200 miles outside the capital city of Kiev. My brother woke up to the explosions um, well, already yesterday at 7 a.m. She says the Ukrainians have been living in fear of Russia ever since Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered an invasion of the Crimea region of Ukraine in 2014. Sanctions we imposed back in 2014, were they effective? Did they stop Mr. Putin? She's hoping President Biden will impose tougher sanctions on Russia, including kicking them out of the world banking system. Lazo Borhi, an associate professor of Central Eurasian Studies at Indiana University, says Russia's basis for annexing Ukraine is that it was once a part of the old Soviet Union. This is about the strategic repositioning of Russia. Uh, Putin wants to get closer to Europe. Uh, he doesn't want to be on the periphery of European politics. And he wants to restore Russia's strategic influence. Shiblova Saeed says she doesn't know what her family will do, especially since her brother has COVID, making it hard for him to travel. There is a lot of fear and they go to bed and they don't know what they will wake up to. Uh, and um, they just don't know what to expect tomorrow in the morning. And there will be a peaceful rally tomorrow to support Ukraine from 1 to 2 at the Sample Gates on IU's campus. Adam Pinsker, Wish TV, wishtv.com and follow us on Facebook. Adam, thank you. Reports out of Russia tonight say more than 1,000 people have been detained in anti-war protests around that country. That's as of Thursday night, Moscow time. Independent monitoring group QVD Info reports more than 1,200 protesters were taken into custody in 44 cities. Demonstrations without a permit is illegal in Russia, but individual single-person protests are allowed. Now, Indiana Congressman Larry Bouchon says that he was surprised Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine. He believes it's a huge mistake. I asked the congressman about President Biden's response. In your opinion, how is the president handling this? And are the sanctions that he announced today enough? Well, I think the administration got off to a little bit of a slow start. I mean, I, I think, uh, and not projecting more strength. But that said, I think, you know, they've caught up. I think the sanctions I, I wish would have been put on a week or two ago, but you know you can debate that one way or the other. Uh, but I do think these initial sanctions are appropriate. I think sending more troops to Germany and other surrounding NATO countries to defend our NATO allies is appropriate. And I'm hopeful the administration will continue to be aggressive. Bouchon says that he doesn't think sanctions alone will stop Putin. 
More reaction now. Indiana Senator Todd Young says the U.S. must stand with Ukraine, writing in part American strength and leadership in this moment is critical. The weak response from the United States following Russia's previous invasions of Georgia and Crimea left Putin undeterred in his pervase, uh, perverse ambition of rebuilding the Soviet Union in the face of Russian aggression in Ukraine. The United States must be united and resolute. And Indiana Representative Frank Mervin condemned Russia's attack, calling it an action which violates international law, threatens international security, and requires our nation to lead a determined multilateral response to deter Russia from continuing down this path of violence and devastation. Emotions are strong for Ukrainians all across central Indiana. Alex Morozov is worried about his family. He's also worried about the more than 100 employees working for him in western Ukraine. Morozov owns a software solutions company in Carmel, and he says it's heartbreaking to watch the country suffer. When uh, you see those uh, Russian missiles hitting Kiev, and uh, you know there's so many, so many innocent people there. So it's, it's tough. Morozov says he's hopeful that the sanctions against Russia will help Ukraine rise and that he's grateful to the United States, saying it will definitely help in the long run.